Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you on this Thursday here. 15 August. The day after the big up day. Or two days after the big up day, one day after the big down day. A little bit jaded here, I have to say. Uh, raise your hand if you sold stocks at 29.40, if you sold crude at 57.40. Um, two days ago, we did both of those, um, and then we just got we just got caught up in the mess in the press and. We really just made peanuts on both of those uh, positions. And it's been kind of annoying, i got to say. Um, and then yesterday, you know, we made an ass of ourselves in uh, Euro-Aussie when we should have just stuck with Euro-Dollar. But anyway, um, no real harm done. Um, and just kind of annoyed. So we got to get back balanced, front foot, as they say, uh, and ready for another day. Let's have a look at this FX uh, Euro dollar chart to start yesterday. Yeah, we did grind through 60. The guys that I talked to in London said about four yards went through between 60 and 65 there at the option expiry. Lots of people were playing, which is a good directional sign. Uh, the fact that the Bears won, it's a good directional sign. The fact that we're at 48 is um, not great, and the fact that we're mid-range is not great. But I do have a feeling that we can just stay core, core short this stuff. And so... There'll be some cheap stops at 60. Uh, sort of the uh, the break-even guys will be at 60. I just don't see this getting back above 90. So we've got some core on here. We're going to be selling uh, 58s, 68s today to try and remain uh, short euro. Maybe take a little bit of a visit uh, down to the bottom of the range. The thing that that's driving this mostly is this chart here, Boons. It's now just hysterical Tower of Babel stuff. Makes absolutely no sense to us. Yields are now minus 60. Who buys Boons at minus 60? And yet, we've had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I don't know. 30 five days of up uh, in our friend the Boons. So all I can say is when this thing turns, it is going to turn like a like evil Knievel over 30 buses into a fiery mess. Um, but uh, for now with this here you can't ignore it. This is something terrible is happening uh, in Europe. I think something terrible that no one even, you know, it, it's something terrible is happening right in front of us that no one even sees. Um, and when you see this kind of structural buying of fixed income, uh, f you just have to worry. Uh, and so we'll sit with our core short euro dollar mainly based on this chart here. Let's go to dollar yen. Uh, we talked about 105 yesterday. Uh, we went down to 70 today, 0270 the range. Down through 70 now, which has been low twice uh, in the last two days. It's kind of an important number. Of course, short dollar yen also looks good to us. So effectively, we're going to be uh, through the components, core short euro yen. But um, we do believe that eventually this 105 has to go. Maybe not today or Friday. Um, this is more of a Jackson Hole level 
it's that important. But sort of a light core short uh, in dollar yen looks looks appropriate based on risk and based on stocks and just based on the fact that 105 is going to attract now uh, and whatever dastardly derivative contract that they're protecting down there this will get blown up eventually so core short uh, dollar yen this is a weird one cable um, two days of decent numbers I don't really understand the politics. The technicals aren't really telling me much. We're kind of mid-range here on this new lower bound. But we will be ready and we will we are looking to get long cable. And I guess we're going to use these highs here, 12105, 121 the figure, 121 the figure um, as a break trade as as we are prone to do historically. Um, but just intuitively, it feels like cable wants to turn. Um, makes no sense. You know, hard Brexit is still going to be terrible for that for that country. At least knee jerk terrible. The first bit will be terrible, but the numbers are, are good, and the positioning is outrageously one sided. So when this does uh, turn there'll be some money to be made. So we're watching cable top side. We don't, we're not going to be buying low ones because um, low ones will obviously normally be created by very bad news. So we don't want to fade bad news. We want to get in when it looks like the shorts are going to be start to get twitchy. Anyway, just keeping our, a, a close eye on cable. Let's go to Euro Norway. We've got rates today in uh, North Orange's Bank. It's going to make a decision today. Lower bound is 990. Uh, if you're quick and you have the setup, as in the bandwidth setup and the liquidity setup, if you have a good aggregator, um, this is tradable news. If they're hawkish, this will get crushed. Um, so, also if they're dovish, we'll probably take a visit up to 1010. But we'll be fading numbers at 1010 or anywhere above 1010. We'll be fading. We're going to have to go in square because it's the Nords, because it's a central bank here. But um, we will be trading this number. We are set up here uh, institutionally and professionally. If you're retail, please don't bother with this. Just wait. Wait literally 90 seconds afterwards and then try and either if it's hawkish to sell a retrace and if he's dovish to buy or actually I wouldn't buy a retrace um, but um, anyway Norge's bank today on your toes for that if you're playing around in Euro Norway not much else to say um, oh yeah Got to talk about the Aussie. Um, pretty good employment numbers. Uh, obviously, last night, uh, Aussie back at 67.80. This is just kind of annoying us, as we talked about yesterday. Um, we got caught in Euro Aussie, so I don't even want to talk about it, but. The um, this level is key in Aussie. So we broke the 45 a little bit, but now this level is at 36. Downside is 36. Top side is 68.20. Um, these are very, very important levels for the Aussie. All right, I've said enough now. Good luck out there, people. Make some dough today, and uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.